presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, Real Madrid get back to winning ways with the help of Sergio Yui. We met Fenerbahce Ulker top scorer Bojan Bogdanovic. Fernando Sanemeterio combines experience and enthusiasm. Karen Gollum has reached new milestones in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. Plus, we bring you the usual B-Win MVP and the top three plays. This is what happened in Moscow. For most people, this would be considered lucky, but not for Sergio Yui. In the past, he has already produced this kind of magic at the buzzer or even during the game. As well as his enormous talent and creativity, there is another secret to his success. I think we enjoy playing. It's one of the keys for us doing so well. The secret is to enjoy on the court with what we do. All the team is involved and is ambitious. We all want to do big things this year. Sergio is a leader of the best offensive team in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. And this has been the case for many years now. It seems to come down to one key element, running. We feel comfortable with a dynamic game, playing the fast breaks. We know it's important to defend hard, find the rebounds, and from there, run. That's when we have a great time playing. Of course, we also practice this every week with the drills that Coach Lasso proposes. Practice and training drills hone the body and mind, but it's the team chemistry and stability that makes Real Madrid such an efficient group. I think we have been two or three years with the same project, adding small pieces that we need. It's not like other years, in which we changed six or seven players, which implied an adaptation process every year. Plus, the fans didn't feel so identified with the team. These last years, things have been done properly. We have been signing young guys and people coming from Real Madrid inferior teams, and we know each other pretty well. The main difference this year is the defence, which is often also the difference between just enjoyment and winning. Without defence, you don't win titles. It's one of the main keys of every game, but especially in basketball. If you have a great offence, but the opponent scores one more point than you, you lose. We insist on strong defence to control the rebounds, which is one of the keys for us to play our dynamic style. Sergio is 26, around the same age as many teammates, like Rudy Fernandez, 28, or Sergio Rodriguez, 27. And they have all bonded to create a special atmosphere away from the court as well as on it. It's easy. The locker room is full of great people, great friends. As I told you, we have known each other for a while and get along really well. There's a great atmosphere also with the staff surrounding the team. They are great people. That helps a lot to get this good atmosphere, which is also one of the keys to make it far. Sergio confirmed his top player status on Thursday night when Real hosted Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv in the game of the week. The Blancos tried to take control of the game early on in the first quarter. But 
Maccabi dug in deep and ended the period with a lead, thanks to a Joe Ingles three-pointer. In the second quarter, Marcus Slaughter gave Madrid their first lead. Then a three-pointer from Tremel Darden brought the hosts to 39-32. Just before the basket from Guy Pnini that brought the half to an end, 39-35. After the break, another three-pointer by Pnini took Maccabi ahead by seven. But Madrid reacted immediately, ending the third quarter down by one. In the last quarter, Yui scored 11 of his 20 points. Top scorer of the game, starting with a three-point play for the advantage. After this three-pointer by Ricky Hickman, Sergio increased the gap to four points with two three-pointers followed swiftly by his free throws that saw out the game 74-68 for Madrid. Now both teams join Seska Moscow at the top of the group with a 4-1 record. He is one of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague top scorers. The 24-year-old Croatian forward was born in Mostar, Bosnia-Herzegovina and from 2011 plays for Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul. Bayern Bogdanovic is averaging more than 15 points per game and was the scoring leader of the regular season. He is a modest star who didn't start playing basketball immediately and who is well aware that he still has a lot of room for improvement. I was playing football a lot of years when I was when I was child, and then uh, then because my father was was basketball player, that's why I uh, I moved to to basketball. It's difficult to describe my, myself in one word. I have too many things to, to, to improve of my game, especially ball handling and I think, uh, I think defense. But on the other hand, I think that this, this year I play much better defense than last season. I'm catch and shot player, I think, so that's the, I feel more comfortable on, on that. His father was his first coach, but then he became inspired by the sporting legend in Croatia. Dražen Petrić. He is one of the of the idol of, of all Croatian people, not just of, of, of basketball players. One of the best Europe player ever. Looking at the Euroleague at this moment in time, Bayern would hand the mantle of best player to another European whose talent is unrivaled. Maybe the best player is Navarro. It's not easy to defend him, that's why. So far this season, Bayern has scored more than 20 points on six occasions, three away from home. Playing under pressure is something that brings the best out of him. The best, for sure, game against Partizan in Belgrade. Especially because of, because of fans, because they put more pressure. Probably, probably is, is good to see and good to play in front of full gym. Now the talent of Bogdanovic is being harnessed by coach Obradovic, who took over at Fenerbahce last summer. A man who guarantees success and improvement for the entire club and for all the individual players. I have a good uh, relationship with, with Jelko. He is one of the best, no one of the best, he is the best coach in, in Europe, maybe in the world. So for sure that I will, uh, I will improve. <laughs> he is almost like a friend with us uh, out of the court, but in, in the court he have to, he have to yell at us. He asking for victories for sure, but we will give him Bayern Bogdanovic's Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul tested the floor of the upcoming Final Four when they took on EA7 Emporio Armani Milan in Round 5 of the Top 16, a hugely important game for both teams. They lost uh, 
game against Stefan Spilsen because of this crazy shot of of Lanunic. If not, they, they are first in, in, in the group. Oma Caleb gave the Turkish team a good start with his drives to the basket. Backed up by Linus Klaser. However, Milan stayed in touch thanks to the plays of Curtis Jurels. 15 points for him overall, but then Nemanja Bielica stepped up to the rim with a monster dunk. Following that, the home side turned the game around in their favour. As they managed to score 10 points in the final 70 seconds of the first half, with Alessandro Gentile really on fire. It remained an open match with the initiatives of Emir Predzic, urged on by his coach. Bogdanovic's first triple of the top 16 gave way to a comeback for Fenerbahce, but in the final minutes, Keith Langford drove for a layup to keep Milan ahead, and Christian Kangor hit a decisive triple from the corner, his fourth from four attempts. Daniel Hackett led the hosts with 17 points, and EA7 Emporio Armani Milan held on for a 90-85 win and improved to a 3-2 record. Fernando Sanemeterio is one of the most experienced Spanish players in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. This is his seventh season, and until recently, he managed to play 99 consecutive games after arriving in 2008 and quickly became an idol for the supporters. He is an eclectic yet humble champion who over the years has received numerous individual plaudits. In the 2010-11 season, he was named in the All-Euroleague first team, and during the years, he was also named MVP of the week on four occasions. I, maybe I know the best in nothing, but uh, I think I'm uh, an all-around player. I'm not the best three-point shooter, I'm not the best uh, rebounder, I'm not the best assister, but uh, I can do it, uh, all the things. Fernando is a very versatile player who has also become a proficient three-point shooter and he continues to be a key offensive element for the team. He also led the 2010-11 EuroLeague in three-point percentage with 50%. All this requires skill, but that isn't the most important element. For sure, I think, I think like a mental, the mental part in, in this kind of, uh, of level is uh, very, very important, more than, than other things. A mental strength that leaves little room for the superstition that surrounds many sportsmen, although that diminishes with age. With the age, you, you understand that it's not important. Maybe when I was younger, I used to make the same things before the game. Now I think it's uh, more in the head and you forget about this, this kind of things. Over the years, San Emeterio has had to face defenders that have made life very difficult for him against teams like FC Barcelona, Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv and Seska Moscow. Kauskas, he's uh, one of the best forwards in the history of Euroleague. Play against Pete Michael, play against uh, Zach Aitzon, one top eight uh, against Maccabi. These three players, I, I like to play against them. Today, Laboral, Cucha, Vittoria are battling away in Group E of the top 16 and the dream is to reach the playoffs. It will not be easy, but there is still a long way to go, and there is one man in particular who has been an outstanding performer for the team. 
However, Sergio Scariolo's men have more than one option in offence. Nacion is making a great season, is playing really good now. Uh, but I think our, our strongest uh, play as a team, uh, defense as a team, uh, in offense uh, passing the ball and uh, looking for the extra pass. Fernando was born on January 1st, 1984. Today he is 30 years old and with age comes experience. Try to work hard and be honest with the people and uh, the results uh, come to you. Anadolu FS Istanbul power forward Kerem Gonlum became only the sixth player in Euroleague history to pass the 1,000 career rebounds mark in his team's top 16 round four victory against EA7 Emporio Armani Milan, reaching the milestone with a characteristically well-timed put-back dunk. And this week, away to Laboral Cucha Vittoria, the 36-year-old set another milestone, playing the 200th game of his EuroLeague career. The most remarkable aspect of Gonlum's story is that he didn't even start playing basketball until the age of 19, when a chance encounter with a stranger inspired him to enter the sport that would very quickly become his profession. I don't know how it happened, but uh, it was real luck for me. Yeah, I started in a concert, a music concert, and uh, one guy behind me gave me his card, and uh, I play basketball, and I start to play basketball like that. Gonlum quickly discovered that along with his basketball size, he had a natural nose for the ball. And just three years after starting to play, he joined one of the biggest teams in Turkey, Fenerbahce Ulker, something he puts down to a combination of personal dedication and God-given talent. When I start, I saw that uh, if I play, if I work hard, everything can go easily and uh, quickly, and uh, I start to work hard, and with the help of the gods, everything go easily and quickly for me. I have a lot of talent about this rebounding and feeling the ball, and uh, I don't, I didn't work hard for this uh, rebound or position or taking the rebounds. This is talent from the guy. By the age of 23, Gonlum was representing Fenerbahce Ulker in the Euroleague, claiming an impressive 69 rebounds in his rookie season, and he has remained one of the competition's ever present. Moving to FS Pielsen in 2005 and now enjoying his 12th season as a Euroleague player. There have been plenty of highlights in Gonlum's double century of Euroleague performances, but his biggest moments so far ended in disappointment when he was denied a first appearance in the final four with a 3 2 defeat against Olympiakos in last season's playoffs. I have good memories and bad memories, but uh, especially last year against Olympiakos. Uh, the third game, we were up 15 and we had some injury problems and uh, we lost the game in Greece. Uh, it was very bad for me because I'm uh, close to my career and this is uh, maybe my first Final Four. That defeat left Gonlum with the unwanted distinction of being the player with the most EuroLeague appearances, never to have progressed to a Final Four. But he has thoroughly enjoyed his life in basketball and has no regrets. I leave a lot of things in my career. I uh, feel it against uh, good teams. I won a lot of games in national team also. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy about my career. Gonlum's Anadolu FS visited San Emeterio's Laboral Cucha on Friday night at the Fernando Bueza Arena in Vitoria. A three-pointer by David Jelinek gave the first double-digit lead to Basconia and they ended the first half up by seven. Zoran Planinic restored the lead for Anadolu in the second half. Then after the break, 
the Turkish team moved further ahead with Dusko Savanovic and then were up by 12 with Jamal Gordon. The third quarter finished 50-63. In the last period, coach Angelo's team controlled the score, never allowing the host to get closer than six points. The Turkish team won their second game in a row in this top 16 Group E, reinstating themselves as contenders for the playoffs. It is no coincidence that the arrival of Vangelis Manseris in 2011 triggered the two most successful seasons for Olympiakos Piraeus in their history. In his 48 Turkish Airlines Euroleague games so far, Manseris boasts an outstanding assist turnover ratio, 87 over 19, by far the best of the league. Although Vangelis is just 23 years old, he talks and thinks like an experienced player, like a winner. I just I try to stick to the plan, what my coach say and uh, what the plays of the team are. And uh, I try not to make so many risks pass because, you know, I like uh, fantasy basket, but I prefer uh, enthusiastic basket more than, uh, than so off. So I don't make a lot of turnovers. Every coach would like to hear words like these, even more so if that player is in a fundamental position. As a point guard, you know, I must say to everybody where is the place, where they must go. I must take the, the mismatches, the weak spots of the opponent defense. And I try to fit my teammates and to give them good passes for them to score and to win the games. Easy. This is Vangelis' third season in the EuroLeague. And although he spent a lot of time out last year through injury, he has learned so much in such a short space of time, beginning with how to guard the biggest stars. I play defense against the, the best players in Europe, like Navarro, like Jamadidis. Thank God Bill is on my team, so I don't have to guard him. Every player has uh, his weak spots, so I try to put the opponent to make the things that he don't like to do. Yeah, sometimes I make good of it, sometimes I don't. And what he lacks in physical presence, he makes up for with steely determination. Maybe I would like you know, to be more athletic, like other guys uh, running and uh, tanking and make all these other options like this. But uh, basketball is uh, one sport that you must put the ball in the basket. It's, it's simple. If you do it with your leg or with your uh, hand or with your head, it doesn't matter. Just to put the ball in the basket and, uh, your, and your team wins. This year, Mansaris has good stats. On top of his assists average, 2.4 in 20 minutes, he also has almost 50% from three-pointers. However, there is one thing he adores more than anything else. The biggest thing for me is, I think, a very crucial basket that, uh, like a buzzer beater, like Pritages in Istanbul, and make you know, the fans uh, cheering uh, your name and uh, everybody gets uh, excited. Seska Moscow point guard Milos Teodosic was named top 16 round 5 B-Win MVP. The 26-year-old Serbian playmaker led the Russians to their fourth win in Group F, a road victory by 86-61 in Munich over FC Bayern. Milos scored 24 points, completed by a career-best six of his ten three-pointers, the one for three by two, plus all four trips to the free-throw line. In addition, Milos delivered five assists, the same number of his rebounds, as well as the foul he drew, for a performance index rating of 31, the best among the players of the winning teams. Now let's check out the top three plays of the week. 
Number three, Milan, Italy. On the half-time buzzer, Alessandro Gentile drives through pressure and improvises a superb one-handed three-pointer to give his Milan team a big lift heading into the interval. Number two, Munich, Germany. Robin Benzing looks to score for FC Bayern, but Kyle Hines assumes the role of Man Mountain to deny him. A huge block and a huge road win for Seska. Number one, Milan, Italy. Fenerbahce's Nemanja Bielica takes the pass, drives inside and soars for an awesome tomahawk dunk. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.